Mechanical core, utterly broken, and possessed with no thought but flight, was hotly pursued. But the Eighth Army was not only the thunder behind, but the lightning ahead. From hull down positions on the road of escape, our guns and tanks knocked out on first day of retreat over 50 of Rommel's remaining panzers without loss. He had already left 500 tanks behind him on the battlefield. We captured over 1,000 pieces of artillery. Up to 1,000 aircraft, from troop carriers to fighters, were wreckage on the ground. Italians in the south, abandoned by Rommel with neither food nor water, were swept up by us to the tune of five divisions. In the north, we took thousands of Germans. Among them were von Thoma, commander of the Africa Corps, Burkhardt, leader of the German parachutists, and eight Italian generals. We buried 20,000 enemy dead. But in rendering our own dead the same final duty, great care had to be used. For the Germans, on several occasions, had attached booby traps to our men's bodies. Pursuit was remorseless. Every enemy column on the coast road or in the desert sometimes jammed head to tail, was bombed, blasted and machine gunned. They tasted what they'd administered in France and Poland. Rommel's flimsy rearguard and was sweeping on. After two days' pursuit, rain fell and the chase was much impeded. Stretches of road turned to shallow streams. Aircraft landing grounds were waterlogged. Despite the rains, however, on the fourth day we had taken after a brief flight, Mirza Matru, the first of the newly captured ports the Navy used to bring up supplies. The first heavily mined roads were encountered at Halfire Pass, where the twisting road rises 700 feet. From then onwards to Benghazi, 450 miles further west, every path had been blown by the enemy, 